I want to welcome everyone to the fourth week of our consideration of the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution. I want to welcome all our members um, whom I spoke to earlier this morning and I also want to uh, say hello to the people who are watching us um, online and on RTE News Now, Falsha. Um, we are steadily approaching the conclusion of our consideration of the Eighth Amendment. This weekend marks the last weekend that substantive material will be presented to the Assembly. Our fifth and final weekend on this topic will focus solely on formulating, agreeing and voting on the recommendations we will present to the Houses of the Oireachtas. This weekend's Citizens' Assembly will be almost entirely dedicated to information, testimony and opinions brought to the Assembly via, submissions, via the submissions process. Later today, members will hear from women who have been directly affected by the Eighth Amendment. Um, tomorrow, 17 advocacy groups um, that made submissions to the Assembly will make oral presentations to the members. Now, a few words about today. Saturday. We begin the weekend with a number of discrete legal sessions. The purpose of these sessions is to clarify outstanding legal issues raised by members in feedback sessions and to provide an overview in a neutral way about the options available in law in relation to the Eighth Amendment. Emily Egan, Senior Counsel, will present the first of the legal sessions and the topic is the role of Article 43, Section 3, Subsection 3 in medical and parental decision making. Emily will be followed by John O'Dowd, um, a lecturer in law in University College Dublin, who will talk on this topic, the constitutional rights of the unborn within <coughs> and beyond the Eighth Amendment. Um, as I mentioned, the purpose of these sessions is to address the outstanding legal issues by members, um, raised by members regarding the Eighth Amendment, uh, beyond simply the termination of preg pregnancy, concerning both the unborn and the parents. And uh, I, I think uh, it has to be acknowledged that the issues that will be addressed by Emily and John are difficult issues, uh, but the important thing is that you, the members of the Assembly, get an overview of the whole situation. Um, then, uh, after, on the next session, Brian Murray, Senior Counsel, will be joining us uh, for um, a session focused on legal consequences of retention, repeal or amendment of Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3 of the Constitution. This will be the first time that the citizens, citizens will engage directly with the possible legal options which they may consider. I hasten to add that I'm conscious that the members have continuously sought clarity on the legal position of the impact of the Eighth Amendment in certain areas and, pos and of possible consequences to the changes to the law as it cur currently stands. Legal clarity is very hard to achieve. The provisions of the Constitution, by their nature, are open to interpretation. Um, there is not always um, uniformity or consistency in interpretation. But this, but this morning, we are seeking to present you with a balanced view of the case law. In other words, how the courts have looked at the issues um, in this area. Uh, the same caveat uh, applies uh, to uh, Brian Murray's discussion on the consequences of retaining the Eighth Amendment, uh, uh, repealing it or amending it. Um, and I just want to pause at, uh, here just to say, and I'll be saying it later in the day, you will recollect that um, you were given a copy of Article 40 um, at, at the first meeting in November in your, in your pack. And in fact, I asked Sharon to put it into today's pack again, because it's very important. What we're here about is Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3. And you must bear that in mind. And I will be preaching on this later in the day again. But, um, and bear in mind that uh, Article 40, there, were, there are two add-ons to it um, in the 12th and uh, 13th Amendment. Um, the uh, protection of the right to travel and the protection of the right to information. Uh, so bear that in mind. This is all about uh, uh, Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3. Um, 
the, this morning's proceedings on the law will mark the end of the facts-based material being presented to the Assembly. Um, from there, we will move on to opinion and advocacy. Um, this afternoon, we will hear personal stories of six women directly affected by the Eighth Amendment. I will explain the session in much great, greater detail after lunch, but for the moment, I would like to take the opportunity to sincerely thank each woman who has agreed to be interviewed and share uh, her experience. Um, Dr. Mary Ryan from Maynooth University, who carried out the interviews with each woman, will lead the session for us. Um, she will provide us with the background as to how the women were selected and how the interviews were structured. Um, I think this afternoon's session will be moving and emotionally challenged for all of us, but it is an essential aspect of our considerations. And um, a couple of fuckle, as they say, about uh, Sunday. Um, tomorrow's proceedings will consist of oral presentations from advocacy groups <coughs> who, again, all made written submissions to the Assembly. We will hear from 17 groups out of a total of 121 that made submissions. We have attempted to accommodate as many uh, groups uh, representing various <coughs> ideological positions and experiences as possible. I think it is reasonable to say that we were never going to be in a position to hear from every group and that every group that made a submission. The members made their own suggestions as to which groups they wished to hear uh, from, and with regard to their preferences, I identified the final seven, 17 uh, we would invite to present to us. Um, I want to emphasize, and this is important, that all of the advocacy group submissions are available to read uh, on our website, uh, and I uh, would want to uh, emphasize that for uh, our viewers uh, outside this room. And the website is www.citizenassembly.ie. Um, in order to accommodate such a large number of groups, Sunday's proceedings have been extended to 4 p.m. I know this was a huge ask uh, of the members who already have dedicated so much of their free time to the task they've been given. I'm most grateful that they agreed uh, to the extension, which will allow us to hear so many different perspectives. Without their dedication, it would not be possible to do this challenging topic justice. One of our key principles is respect, and to date, this principle has been adhered to. I would ask everyone to bear this in mind over the course of the weekend, particularly if presented with an opinion one may not necessarily like <coughs> or agree with. So I want to emphasise respect. And um, I'm now going to call on Emily Egan, Senior Counsel, to begin this morning's session. Thank you.